So I grew up sailing. I grew up in Cape Cod. Um, I kept showing up until they sold it to me. Okay, but you've been to the Caribbean. You've been to some pretty exotic places. Why the coast of Maine? So when we're anchored, people can go off from the from the mothership and just explore around the coves themselves or go to the beaches stuff like that i love that you just called it the mothership i don't We're normally like... do that i don't know why i did that <laughs> hi my name is janelle welcome to culture trekking where i try to collect unique stories from around the globe that focus on sustainable adventure and cultural connections i call utah home but today i am taking you to camden maine for a wind jamming trip Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am headed out with the Wind Jammer Association here in Maine. Now, what is wind jamming? It's actually a sailing ship. It's kind of like an eco tour that doesn't impact the environment. So I'm starting off this journey at Hawthorne Inn. Hawthorne Inn is a beautiful Victorian home that was built in 1894. The cutest couple, they're the sixth owners of this place. It is such a calm and peaceful place to start off this cruising journey. Lisa and Greg Weiss are the sixth owners of this Victorian home and there are plenty of rooms to choose from. This used to be the carriage house, then turned into a barn. Now they have four rooms with soaking tubs. There are gas log fireplaces. Um, the breakfast this morning, oh, so good. With the fruit, fresh fruit that was actually ripe. The frittata with the fiddle stems, I think they're called. <laughs> they're ferns that are kind of in this swirl. It's when the ferns sprout and it looks like a fiddle stem. That was so good. I am headed over to meet with Garth, the captain of the Louis R. French, which it's the 150th birthday of the Louis R. French this month. So I am helping them celebrate. We'll talk to him and I'll explain more about what wind jamming is and what to expect and what to pack. So stay tuned. Okay, I have an exclusive interview with the captain of the Lewis R. French. This is so exciting. Sorry, I'm just like buzzing because I'm so excited to be on your ship. I So the last time I went sailing was in Seattle. Much smaller ship, mm -hmm. really bouncy and wavy, but how long have you been a captain of this ship? I bought this one in 2004. So I've been the captain since then. So this is our 18th year of running the boat. So my next question is, how long have you been sailing? So I grew up sailing. I grew up in Cape Cod, um, sailing small boats. And I had a grandfather that retired onto a little 30 foot sailboat and he would take us out. So that's where we started just boating and rowing and sailing there. And then when I was about 20, I went down to the Caribbean and sailed for a while and slowly made my way up the coast until I got to Maine and started working on this boat as crew and just loved what these boats did and loved the boat and just, I kept showing up until they sold it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? Yes, you just keep showing up. That's my motto. If you show yeah. up every day, eventually good things happen. Show up on time every day, yeah, good things happen to Yeah, on time every day. That's the key. <laughs> I have a problem with that. <laughs> You're on time right now. Yeah, You're okay, good. well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Okay, but you've been to the Caribbean, you've been to some pretty exotic places. Why the coast of Maine? Uh, you'll see. You'll see really soon why. Can uh, you give me a hint? Yes. We have It's the perfect yet. place to sail because there's thousands of islands and you can just wind your way in between all of them and then we can just stop and anchor at almost every single one of them. We can just stop and anchor and go ashore and explore oh so my gosh, it's still freedom. wild yes that is exactly it and so in other places we are more scheduleized we have to get to this place we have to get to this place here it's all wind so if we only make five miles tomorrow there's a beautiful place if we make 30 miles tomorrow there's a beautiful place to stop so that's the main coast gives you that which i is cannot wait I know all of you culture trekkers are on here because you love the forest and you probably love the ocean just as much as I do. Now the water is pretty cold here, but yeah. we're going to get a chance to jump in. We've swam on, we've only done three trips this year and we've swam on every trip already. 
and only you, because people are insane. And you guys have like some amenities here where people can get in the water, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you allow people to like get on a rope and like swing off the ship like a pirate? No, that doesn't quite work here. Oh, we okay. don't do any heavy pirating <laughs> swinging anymore. Okay. No, we never did. But yeah, we have a couple rowboats, we have paddle boards, we have those sort of things. So when we're anchored, people can go off from the from the mothership and just explore around the coves themselves or go to the beaches stuff like that i love that you just called it the mothership i don't we're normally like, do that i don't know why i did that <laughs> we're like on the the star trek version of the ocean on the mothership <laughs> yeah an old wooden boat the mothership yeah. <laughs> that's awesome being on this ship for such a long time do you have any like nooks and crannies that are your favorite parts of the ship it just all depends on the what's going on that night. Sometimes the galley is just the best. You're just sitting down in the galley and it's great. Sometimes standing right here is the best. So I wouldn't say there's a favorite nook that I crawl into and like <laughs> enjoy. It's all, it's sort of like my, people ask what my favorite island is. Say, well, it depends. It depends on what the wind's doing and what the moon's doing and what, what, the, the, day. what the day is, but. Kind of uh, like a woman. Kind of, like, on, <laughs> kind of, yes, it's like day. a woman. Some days this is my favorite thing about my wife and some days this is my favorite thing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, two more questions. Yeah. One, what's your favorite part about sailing? And give me a juicy story oh, no. about your favorite <laughs> story of being a captain on this ship. Um, my favorite part about sailing is just the general being out on the water. I just sort of like, such a nice place to be and it's just interesting for me i've always liked being in the water i think a lot of people are drawn to that as soon as they get out on the water they like that like some people like the desert or some people like it's um, like i call it meditation in motion some days some days it's very calm some days it's very <laughs> wild and i like that sort of those changes people ask me my favorite story i it's so hard for me to pick something out but then when we're sailing along something just tricks my memory of something and, oh, and it comes, that comes out right that's what i do a lot <laughs> it's just like oh, i remember when we sailed in here one time and this happened and this happened and this happened but to say that i have one favorite story I said, it's impossible because we're out been out here for 20 years and just things happen you have you have guests you have the, sometimes it's the personality sometimes it's a situation sometimes it's the weather but i don't know if i could i honestly say that i cannot pinpoint say this is the best thing that's ever happened it's also silly and crazy and fun that's amazing well it's a beautiful ship Thank congratulations you. on being captain Thanks. thank you for taking the time to do this little interview with me and i'm so excited to get on this ship if you guys have any questions for captain gar please leave them in the description box below make sure to like subscribe share with a friend because we want more people on his ship <laughs> see you in the next one y'all